Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into MB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis says the party's huge debt will likely impact its effectiveness in the upcoming North Africa by-election. Disgruntled Wyndham Resort employees on work to rule. One man's attempt to protect his home from demolition by urban renewal, plus government awaiting approval for additional funding for the road improvement project. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Paige McCartney and MB12 starts right now. Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis today admitting that his party is still in debt and has less money than the Progressive Liberal Party going into the upcoming North Abaco by-election. Charisma Robinson has more. A by-election could be held in the next few weeks as North Abaco Member of Parliament and former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram plans to resign his post in the House of Assembly sometime tomorrow. Ingram's resignation comes as the party is still scrambling to make a final decision on who its North Abaco candidate will be. And as the party considers which of its four prospective candidates will run, it will also have to figure out how it's going to fund its campaign on the ground in Abaco. Following the May 7th general election, Ingram revealed that the party had finished its campaign carrying about $1 million in debt, and it appears as if not much has changed since then. That debt is coming down. That's coming down. And we will, no, I can't give you a specific number now, but it's, it's coming down. And we will deal with our debt, uh, with our debt, um, with time. Despite the monetary advantage Minnis believes the PLP will have going into the by-election, Minnis says the party is still determined and focused. The PLP has been on the ground in Abaco for some time now, as its candidate Renato Curry resides there. We will run a campaign. We will have individuals from throughout the Bahamas who will come down to assist. Yes, the PLP may have more money than us, but what we have, we have energy, we have a desire to win, we are focused, and we have a determination. Once you have energy, desire, determination, and a will, and a will to improve the conditions of the people, and we will have God's blessing, we will go forth and become victorious. Now, Minutes could not say how much money the party will need for the by-election, but he says the party would use small donations from the public to help finance its campaign. We're having individuals, um, average individuals, some are donating $5, $50, $10, but what they're saying is that the party belongs to them, and that's what we want. We want to make the FNM a party owned by the people, a party of the people, a party for the people. Those little two dollars, every cent count. The little money that everyone comes and donate, that all count. Every great oak tree was once a nut. It did not become that big overnight. It started small. Meantime, parliamentary officials say they're prepared for the by-election. Deputy Permanent Secretary at the Parliamentary Registration Department, Sherlyn Hall, says registration will continue until the by-election is declared. He says there are 4,436 registered voters in North Abaco as of yesterday, but he could not say how much the by-election will cost the department as there are 12 polling divisions in North Abaco, 12 presiding officers, and polling staff for each poll. Station. Hall says the department trusts that everything will go smoothly in North Abaco. Reporting for MB12, I'm Charisma Robinson. Well, the Free National Movement today paying a courtesy call on Roman Catholic Archbishop Patrick Pinder, who took the opportunity to voice the church's position on the legalization of the numbers business in the country. The whole question of, um, uh, of um, Games of chance are not inherently evil, as I state in that statement. However, they can tend towards certain excess, which can be evil, okay? 
And so we have to take all those things into, con into, into consideration. We don't tell our members to vote <laughs> one way or the other. Our task is to assist uh, our membership in forming their conscience, bringing an informed conscience to issues. We don't tell them how to vote. We don't do that. We, as we, we assist them in informing their consciences in order that they may, on the basis of an informed conscience relative to the matter, uh, um, uh, vote with, uh, in the way that they think is right. The Archbishop says there are a number of issues relative to the legalizing of gambling. There are a number of issues uh, um, uh, relative to this whole question. Um, uh, but to me, the, the core issue, the core issue as I see it is this. Um, we have a, legis a law which is wholesale disregarded, okay? Now, uh, uh, public authority cannot tolerate the wholesale disregard for the law, which is in fact what is happening. So we have to make up our minds about how to address that. That's a, uh, that, that is a key issue. That's at the core, I th believe, of what we're dealing with now in this, is, in this question of, of the lottery. Well, the temporary closure of the Wyndham Nassau Resort and Crystal Palace Casino is in sitting well with the union representing its workers. President of the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union, Nicole Martin, says as of last evening, those disgruntled employees were on work to rule. She blasted Bahama for offering employees early retirement and voluntary separation plans without consulting the union first and said her members are very concerned about job security. Bonnie Toot reports. Hundreds of employees at the Wyndham Nassau Resort and Crystal Palace Casino are said to be on work to rule. Angry workers say they were blindsided by Bahamar's decision to temporarily close the resort. They're also suspicious of that early retirement and voluntary separation plan. President of the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union, Nicole Martin, and members of her executive team met with about 200 Wyndham employees at Worker's House last evening. She ordered them to perform the duties outlined in their job descriptions and nothing else. A work to rule is you show up at the re required time, you leave at the required time, and you do only what you are required based on your job category. Whatever that is, that is all you do. No favors. I'm not sure when it will end, but you can't treat us just however you like, and we must, I guess, just take whatever crumbs fall from the master's table and be happy. Martin called Bahamar officials out of order. She told NB12 she was shocked to learn of the Wyndham's temporary closure. As Bahamar's senior vice president, Robert Sands, told the union just last week that the resort would not be closed. Furthermore, she says, the developer had no right to offer early retirement and voluntary separation plans to her members before discussing it with the union. What I am most bothered by is the flippant approach by this employer that they don't have to talk to the union on behalf of those workers. They could just do what they feel like um, and clearly they were talking to the government so they could talk to the government but they don't have to talk to the people that represent the interests of the workers. If closure has to happen, we were told that the closure will come six months prior to the deadline for opening in 2014. But at any point, if it became necessary, we would have hoped that the employer handle it in a way that does not um, raise questions. Sands told NB12 on Tuesday that management gave such late notice because officials had hoped to avoid taking such drastic measures. However, Martin says she finds the whole situation suspicious. She questioned the need to offer VSEPs to workers if the Wyndham will only be closed from September 4th to October 17th. She says job security is a huge concern for her members at this point. But certainly it cannot be right for thousands of uh, Chinese workers to remain employed and Bahamian workers put out of work. Just on the face of it, if you say we're closing temporarily, why would you be offering any separation package if it is a six-week closure? The only time in our relationship that any discussion of packages or separation come up is in the case of layoff of longer than 10 weeks. So if we're talking about a six-week period, why are you talking about early retirement? Why are you talking about separation packages? It is absolutely not uh, something just wrong. 
One Wyndham employee of 12 years says he's so fed up that he plans to accept a package. However, the hotel union president has warned employees not to sign up for anything until the union is done negotiating with Bahamar. Union leaders met with Prime Minister Perry Christie and Bahamar officials this morning. They will meet again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Reporting for MB12, I'm Vonik Toot. Well, days after urban renewal heads explained why they have the right to tear down homes they deem unfit to live in, yet another resident who alleges his home is set for demolition insists it's completely unfair. The 50-year-old resident says if his home is torn down, he will be left homeless. Our Jasmine Bonamy has the story. 50-year-old Julian White admits that his home may not be up to most people's living standards, but he says it's the best that he can do with what little he has. White said officials from Urban Renewal informed him last Monday that his Palm Beach Street home was facing demolition. NB12 contacted officials at the Anglerston Urban Renewal office that is just down the street from White's home. They confirmed that White has been given notice. White says he has been living in the home that was badly damaged during hurricane Hurricane Irene for more than 30 years, and it's a horrible feeling to know he may lose it. White says he understands urban renewal was launched to help the community, but there are those who are happy with their way of life. They are making issues that, that don't con comprehend with the lifestyle of people. NB12 spoke to co-chair of Urban Renewal, Cynthia Mother Pratt, as she was traveling to Grand Bahama to launch the program there. While she could not speak to the specific case, Pratt insisted that officials were not in the business of destroying people but building them up. She added that derelict cars and dilapidated homes will be targeted and removed. However, she added that officials are willing to sit down with anyone who feels that urban renewal is not doing right by them. Last week, she and her co-chair Algernon Allen explained the Building Regulations Act Section 10, which empowers the minister responsible, in this case Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Works and Urban Development Philip Brave Davis, to restrict the use of any building in the Bahamas or have it demolished. White insists if and when his home is knocked down, he will be left living in the streets. Hey invested in this property. The, host, the roof is solid, the floor is up to the mark. Now, like I said, the only thing is the window. Now, the window, I can have that fixed by tomorrow. I don't need nobody rebuilding me house. I already bought this. I am 50 years old. Where am I going to wait for another 30 years to buy another house? Since the program was launched June 3rd, urban renewal officials have already demolished several structures that they deemed abandoned, unlivable, a haven for criminals, or an environmental hazard. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy.